Hello there. I don't know about you, but I love stretching my supplies and getting the most from them. I'm Juliana Michaels, and in this video, I'm sharing six more ways you can use a cover plate die. With just one die, I'm sharing six different background ideas, and as a bonus, I'm also sharing six different ways to use a sentiment die to embellish the card. And while the finished projects I'm sharing are Valentine's Day cards, you can take any of these techniques and use them to create a card for any occasion. If you're looking for more ideas on how to use cover plate dies, make sure you check out my original six ways to use a cover plate die video. You can find a link to that in the description box below. If you're interested in the supplies I've used to create my cards, you can find the links to them in the description box below. When you shop through those links, it supports me and I really appreciate that so very much. To find them, just click on the word more to open up the text box and you'll find all of my links, including how to sign up for my newsletter and so much more. And if you'd like to see the cards in more detail, you can find the link to my blog below as well. Now let's get on with the making. So scrapbook.com just recently released a bunch of A2 cover plate dies and they come in a variety of different patterns, like this um, wavy one, stripes. This one's got little waves with some embossing dots, diagonal stripes, and then vertical and horizontal stripes with these rounded corners. And an A2 cover plate die, if you're not familiar with it, is basically a die that is four and a quarter by five and a half inches, which is kind of a standard card size known as A2. And so this will cut out uh, paper that is the exact size of the front of a card. And so in this video, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be working with this bold curves die and showing you a variety of card ideas using just this one die. The paper I'm going to be working with to create the backgrounds is the pink smooth cardstock from scrapbook.com and plain printer paper. These papers are already um, cut down to a standard A2 size, which is four and a quarter by five and a half inches. The other paper I'm going to be working with is the printer paper, and this is just simple um, printer paper, nothing fancy. And I'm going to cut these down and have um, six of these cut down to four and a quarter by five and a half inches to use as a base. Off camera, I die cut six different colors from this paper pad using the bold curves um, die set. So as you can see, this paper pad has a wonderful range of beautiful pink papers that are almost in an ombre uh, order for you already. So that is what I did. I just picked six of the colors and there are actually uh, eight colors in the pack. And I then sorted each one, kind of separated them with a the piece of um, printer paper so that you can then get six cards out of each one of those die cutting sessions. So, you know, you're gonna cut this out of that color and that color and that color, that color, that color, that color. Then you're gonna have, um, you know, a lot of scraps if you only wanted to do one card to get this ombre effect. This is another way to mass produce some card backgrounds as well because you're going to have all these scraps that you can use for another card. So that's I, that's what I'm going to do with these is show you some examples of ways you can use these scraps and also use this die to get some different looks. Obviously with all these strips, you're gonna to need to apply them to something to keep them in place. So you could apply these directly to your um, card base if you wanted. However, I prefer to create my card fronts and then later on add them to a base. That's just a personal preference. So you could um, you know, do it either way. And you know, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to get these it off to the side here and then you know you can use any kind of adhesive to do this I personally like to use uh, a tape runner 
but I know there's a lot of people out there that like to use liquid adhesives. But my trick for this is to line is to just apply the adhesive on one side and then line up the one paper on the side away, kind of hold up where that adhesive on the side where the adhesive is, get everything lined up where you want it, and then you can then you can stick it down. And then you can and then once you get that one, you can just kind of easily line up the next piece because they kind of lock in with each other. And then just go on down, adding each color. To get the rest of them adhered, then you can just run either the adhesive on this side or however you like. And just flip it back over. And have each one together like that. So it just gives it a little bit more stability to work on with this, um, with it being adhered to that piece too, especially if you're not putting it straight onto your card base. Now I personally will probably be um, cutting this down because I like to mat mine. The A2 cover plates are four and a quarter by five and a half inches. So that is the full size of a, of a card front if you're doing that size card. Like I said, I'm gonna trim off a little bit around the edges, so having it adhered on this um, piece of printer paper will allow me to do that a lot easier as well. This is one option, just a plain and simple ombre background. And then you can embellish it, which I will share with you after I go over all of the background options. So for this next one, I've gone ahead and adhered the paper strips to the printer paper. And this one I'm going to emboss in my in an embossing folder. And to do that, I'm just going to um, spritz this with a little bit of water using my Distress Sprayer. And that will allow the paper just to kind of bend a little bit easier and be less likely to tear. And then it'll also help it take a better impression. So I'm just gonna give that a couple spritzes of water. and then place that in the embossing folder and then run this through my die cutting machine. So here's what it looks like after it's been embossed. And um, so the paper will be just a little bit damp and you can use your heat tool to dry that just to kind of help speed that up if you need to or you can just set this to the side and let it dry. I want to share another option with you to add a little more interest to this background. As you can see, when it went through the embossing folder, it kind of cracked that paper a little bit anyway. So one thing you could do is take a piece of sandpaper or a sanding disc like this one from Ranger, and you could rub over that and just kind of bring out more of that white. You're just very, very, very lightly rubbing over the surface of this. So very, very lightly. I mean, I'm kind of barely touching the paper. So that's one, one option, a way to add, add some more interest here. There you go. So for this next one, I'm gonna do some stamping and heat embossing using this um, stamp set from the Tiny Prince stamp set, Tim Holtz. So we're gonna stamp that on the center here and as I mentioned I'm going to be cutting this down so it's it's fine if the stamp is a little bit smaller than the paper and again you can use any kind of background stamp that you like for this so I'm going to place this in my stamping tool I'm just going to put a little bit of a repositionable adhesive there in the center and then I can that will help hold my paper in place because as you can see you can't really get the magnets on it with a background stamp Then I'm going to apply uh, Versamark uh, watermark ink to the stamp here. And to help me get a good impression here, I'm just rubbing over that with a Stampendable stamping tool, which is just a tool with a foam pad here on the bottom, or a felt pad on the bottom here that just allows you to give some pressure without having to push with your fingers, which um, could be helpful for some people. And yes, there's ink 
transferred, but we're gonna put embossing powder on here, so that's not going to show. The embossing powder I'm using is Copper uh, by Ranger. And then I'm gonna heat emboss this with my heat gun. And there is a look at the embossed paper. And yes, it has a little bit of a warp to it, but once we, um, you know, get this glued down onto the card base, it will be fine. Another option before you adhere everything down to add a little interest to these is you can take the sanding disc and just sand the edges of these and that will, because this paper has a white core to it, so it's a white paper that has color printed onto it, when you sand it, you're gonna be able to see that white paper because you're removing the color. And then you just, again, just lightly rub along the edge there. And then once you get them all sanded, then you just wanna kind of wipe off any of that, some of that kind of dust from the sanding. And get that out of the way here. And so then when you lay these out, you can see that you then just have that kind of a distressed edge. And then you just glue that down and you have another background. Another option with the strips is to ink the edges of them with some ink. And for this, I'm just gonna use a little distress ink and vintage photo. But that because I kind of like a little bit more of a vintage feel to things, but you could ink them with any color. And I am not inking this end because as I had mentioned earlier, I'm gonna trim that off and so I'll ink the edges of that later. And then we'll just adhere these to the printer paper. So there's a look at that background. I'm gonna do one more option. And for this one, I'm gonna combine several of the techniques from some of the previous ones that I shared. So I'm gonna ink the edges of these with the vintage photo. And then I'm going to adhere these to the paper. And then next step, let that glue dry for a second. And then what I'm going to do is emboss this again with just using a different embossing folder to give it a different look. So I'm going to use this industrial embossing folder to give it a little bit more of a a little bit more of a masculine feel, even though it's still pink. So once again, we'll just spritz this with some water. And then I'll run this through my die cutting machine. So here's what this one looks like after being embossed. And instead of like on the first one where I did the sanding, this time I'm gonna add some luster wax. And I like to wear a glove when I'm applying this just because it's a little bit messy to clean off your fingers. So to just kind of wipe wipe it a little bit into the lid and then kind of that kind of gets an even application onto my finger and then I can just lightly rub over the surface. I'm not pushing down, I'm just fairly lightly rubbing. I personally absolutely love 
the effect it adds. To the finished background. Isn't that cool? So then this will dry, and then once it dries, it's completely permanent. So I mean, even now, like you're, you can maybe get a little bit where you could wipe some of it off, but once it completely dries, it's it's permanent. And if you do get it on your uh, tabletop or anything like that, you um, or your craft mat, you can clean it up with rubbing alcohol. So when we go back to the other embossed background that we sanded, you know, you could do, you know, you could use the luster wax on this one. You could have sanded that one. So it just gives you some options. So it just gives you options on different ways to use that same dye from super simple to a little bit more texture and interest. And the, you know, you remember you're going to cut this to get that ombre effect. You're going to have six backgrounds anyway. So if there's you know, one of these um, techniques that you really like, then make all of yours that way. Or you can make each one different, just like I am here, and create six different cards. So it's really up to you. The papers I use to create the embellishments on the card is vellum, uh, black craft stock from Tim Holtz, and then the black two-tone wood grain from Tim Holtz. The dyes I'm using is this Love You die for the sentiment. And then I'm also using the large heart from the DIY pocket hearts die set. And I cut this from vellum, as you can see here, but then it has these little folds to turn this into a pocket. Well, I just used my paper trimmer and you could, or you could use scissors. And I just trimmed off those little tabs to get the heart. So to add a little interest, I added some machine stitching to the heart. Another little tip I wanted to share with you is just to save some paper when you're die cutting. And this is that mixed media heavyweight paper from scrapbook.com and I die cut the sentiment from it. And I just cut it from the center of the paper and then I'm gonna use this as the base for my background that we created. And then I took the die cut and for this one in particular I applied Versamark watermark embossing ink so any kind of clear embossing ink will work and then I applied ultra thick embossing powder and I heat set that with my heat tool applied more ink and then added more powder and I did that for a total of three times and as you can see it builds up this really cool finish and it almost turns it into looking like it's made out of acrylic, um, which I think is just kind of a cool, cool effect. And so I'm going to assemble this card and just kind of show you how I put, put these together. You could use liquid adhesive, you could use uh, tape, tape runner, whatever you prefer. Um, I almost all normally use tape runners, but lately been switching over to liquid adhesive a little more giving that a chance to see I just see so many people doing that so I thought well I'll give it a try and see if I like that or not because like I said I've always used um, tape runners but I think that goes back to my scrapbooking days and using tape runners uh, for that so one thing that's nice about a liquid is it gives you just a little bit of a second here to wiggle things around and get them lined up. And then what you can do there is just take, take some stamping blocks and kind of lay it down on there and give it a second to dry. This glue from scrapbook.com and Sartis glue dries super quick, so it'll be dry here in just a second. For the heart, I just kind of left all those strings hanging on there and then just kind of wadded them up either under or on top of the die cut. And then I'm going to glue the um, Love You sentiment on top of that. So 
So I'm just gonna apply some adhesive here. And I'm not gonna apply adhesive to the entire die cut because I just wanna glue to the vellum first. Because if you've never worked with vellum, or maybe you have, you realize or know that it's a little tricky with adhesives because uh, you can see through it. And so well, the adhesives will show. So a little trick you can do is, so we're gonna glue this down. Just gonna sit this on here and give that a second to dry. Okay, so I was having trouble actually getting this to dry to the vellum because this was kind of curling up. So what I did is I laid it down onto my craft mat and just took my heat tool. So just on a very low heat setting and I just heated it kind of from a distance here and it started to kind of flatten down a little bit. And then I laid my block on there to um, until it cools and that seemed to kind of help flatten it out so it was a little bit easier for the adhesive to stick to the paper. Okay, so then once that was cooled, then I could add the rest of the adhesive to the die cut. And now I'm applying the, that adhesive to the entire piece because I want to get all of this adhered down. So by applying the adhesive to the back side here, you won't be able to see the adhesive and you flip it over from the front. And then I'm gonna add a little tiny dot on that stitching area there on the heart, because that end tends to wanna pop up a little. And then just flip it over and get it centered. And then again, take those um, stamp blocks and then just kinda of hold it there and let it dry. So here's a look at the finished cards and this first one is the one I just showed you how to assemble and for this one this is the back background where we um, where we inked the edges of the paper then we embossed it and then we added the uh, luster wax and then the sentiment here is the one where I use the ultra thick embossing powder on this card the this is just the die cut, cut out of black mixed media paper. And I cut it twice and then layered it just to give it a little bit more dimension. And then for the background, this is the ombre background that I created with, uh, that was just plain. And to add a little bit of interest, I inked the edges and then added some machine stitching around the outside edge. This is the background with the sanding and I just glued it to a piece of that wood grain paper and then I die cut the sentiment using the wood grain paper did that um, a second time with black cardstock and then adhered those together before sticking them down to just add a little bit more dimension to the sentiment um, another option this is the background where I inked the edges of the, st the strips. And then for the sentiment, the uh, what I did here is I applied Distress Crackle Paint just to give it a little bit of a crackly, distressed look. So there's another option. For this one, I used the black craft stock on the background. This is the background where we did the stamping and heat embossing. And then I use that same black craft stock for the sentiment. I sanded the edges of the background and the sentiment. I cut this out of plain black cardstock and then the craft stock layered them together and glued them onto the card front to give that a little bit of dimension. And then last but not least, this is the card front where we did the embossing folder and the sanding. And this sentiment 
I used um, black embossing powder, but you could also use white or clear embossing powder because I'd cut this from black cardstock and then adhered and then applied the embossing ink to the die cut and then heat embossed it. So you could use either clear or black embossing powder, whichever one you prefer. And another little thing that you could add to each of these cards if you wanted would just be like, to add another little bit of interest would be an additional stamped sentiment. And for this, I used the um, scrapbook.com Word Fetty Oh So Happy stamp set. And I just stamped the Love You More in black ink, inked the edges and then um, with a little vintage photo and then uh, adhered it with a piece of foam tape. And as you can see here, I just cut several more of these. Um, I've also got one that says love you the most. There's a couple different ones in here that you might um, find, or you may have other sentiments at home, you know, in your stash that would work. And then I just adhere those to the card anywhere, you know, love you more, love you the most. You could even put both of them on the card. Just some different ideas for how to use these. Thanks so much for stopping by today. I hope you enjoyed learning six more ways to use a cover plate die, along with all the extra tips and tricks sprinkled throughout. Until next time, stay crafty, my friend. Thanks so much for watching. I'm so grateful for you. I was wondering if you could do me a quick favor and subscribe to my channel or leave me a thumbs up or a comment. If you're feeling extra generous, I'd love for you to share about my channel with your friends. All of these things help out us YouTubers so much, and it would mean so much to me to have your support.